Autonomous driving technology is advancing at a rapid pace, and in this major transformation, the United States and China are taking the lead by swiftly expanding the commercial deployment of robo-taxis. Both countries are projected to see autonomous taxis reach as much as 50% market share within the next decade, and the global robo-taxi market is expected to expand at an average annual rate of 51.4%, reaching about $190 billion by 2034. However, in Korea, autonomous taxis still feel unfamiliar. Domestic technology remains behind that of the United States and China, and full-scale testing has yet to take place. Moreover, Korean policy has largely focused on protecting the traditional taxi industry, resulting in traditional taxis holding a dominant 94% market share Meanwhile, after the pandemic, the overall supply of taxis declined and the average age of taxi drivers increased, leading to a shortage of individual taxis during late night hours and making it even harder for passengers to find a ride. Introducing autonomous taxis would lower operating costs compared with traditional taxis, which is favorable for consumers. However, this also means that workers in the traditional taxi industry could face significant losses due to a sharp weakening of their competitiveness. To introduce autonomous taxis while minimizing the harm to traditional taxi workers, three approaches can be considered. First, regulatory relaxation. Korea operates under a strict cap on the total number of taxi licenses, making new license entry extremely limited. As a result, there is effectively no viable pathway for autonomous robo-taxis to enter the market. To address this, Korea could either ease the licensing criteria for platform-based transport operators or, following the examples of the United States and China, establish a separate legal category for autonomous robo-taxi services. Subsequently, for actual deployment, detailed regulations, such as those governing testing conditions, would also need to be revised in a phased manner. Next, compensation and restructuring measures for existing individual taxi operators are essential. Through the Taxi Development Fund, the government can purchase a certain number of taxi licenses to reduce the share of individual taxis and explore mechanisms such as allowing existing individual taxi owners to receive a portion of the equity or profits generated by autonomous robo-taxi operators. In fact, when taxi license prices plummeted in Western Australia after Uber's entry, the government implemented a similar buyback program and succeeded in purchasing 99.7% of existing taxi licenses, thereby stabilizing the market. Lastly, for swift implementation, it would be advisable to first establish a successful pilot in regional cities and then gradually scale the reform nationwide. This approach could begin in mobility-challenged regions where demand for taxi services is high and license buybacks are relatively easy to implement, and initially be deployed in areas such as Sejong and Pangyo, where advanced autonomous driving infrastructure is already in place. Finally, above all, for Korea to turn the transition to the autonomous driving era into an opportunity, fostering its own domestic robo-taxi companies will be essential.